computed all the returns, standard deviation, correlations, and the beta. Now let's see how do we use the beta to find the expected return of uh, the single stocks and the expected return and the risk of a portfolio. Okay. Now before we uh, and proceed to the expected returns and the portfolio, let's just uh, look at the betas. Um, Google, HP, Pepsi, Walmart, and JP Morgan all has different types of beta. Google's beta is below the market, uh, the average beta of the market portfolio. HP is slightly higher. Uh, Pepsi is uh, substantially lower, and Walmart is substantially lower. However, JP Morgan has a higher beta than the market portfolio. Okay. Now, for the expected return, we are going to use the CAPM model, the capital asset pricing model, and the inputs for the capital asset pricing models are risk-free rate, market rate of return, and uh, the beta of individual stocks. Now here I use the risk-free rate of 3.12%, which is the 30-year um, T-bond at this moment, and the market rate of return is uh, what we computed um, in the previous video is uh, going to be 15.55%. Okay, so let's use these two inputs to find the uh, expected re return for Google, HP, Pepsi, Walmart, and JP Morgan. So we're going to start with an equal sign. And according to the uh, CAPM model, you know that we start with a risk-free rate, so that's 3.12%. Uh, um, this is cell B75. Then we uh, have to um, take a difference between the market return and the risk-free rate. It, that's um, the risk market risk premium and then we multiply with the beta of uh, Google that we just uh, found all right now if you press enter so that gives us the expected return of Google all right now we can do the same thing for HP we start with the risk free rate and then we take a difference between the market risk premium and the risk free rate that gives us the market um, sorry the market return and the risk free rate that gives us the market risk premium and then we multiply with HP that HP is beta to gives us the ex expected return for HP so uh, we'll just pause the video for a second and we're going to compute the rest of the expected return okay all right now once uh, we computed all the expected returns uh, the numbers looks like that um, for Google, it's 12.6%, um, HP is 18.1%, Pepsi is 7.1%, Walmart is 7.05%, however, for JP Morgan, is 22%. Now, the reason why we have these numbers is because it's primarily driven by their risk profile. You can see that Pepsi and Walmart has lower risk, so their expected return is also lower, However, JP Morgan and HP has a high risk, is, are, both of them are very high risk, that's why they have relatively a relatively higher expected return, and the Google is somewhere in the middle, so that's why their return is also uh, in between, okay? Now the next, what we're going to assume is, let's say if I have $100,000 and I'm going to invest all of my money to all these five stocks equally, then uh, let's see how do we compute the um, the weights. That means my percentage of money invested in each stocks. Okay, so I'm going to start with an equal sign, and I'm going to start uh, investing uh, twenty thousand over one hundred thousand. That gives me the twenty percent weight, and I'm going to copy the same thing over. That gives us uh, the weights of each of these stocks. Now, once I find each of the stocks' weights, then I can compute the portfolio beta, which is a weighted average of each of the uh, individual stocks' beta. Now, I start with an equal sign, and then I'm going to multiply the each weights with their beta. So uh, I invest 20% in Google, and um, my beta of Google is 0.77, and then I also invest 20% in HP and the beta of HP is 1.21 uh, then I invest 20% um, uh, in, in Pepsi and the beta of Pepsi is um, 0.32 I invest 20% in 
Walmart my beta for Walmart is 0.32 and finally I invest 20% in JP Morgan and uh, JP Morgan's beta is 1.52 now once I press enter that gives me the overall beta the beta of my overall portfolio is 0.82 so you can see that if I invest in different types of stock with different risk prof profile, I can somehow find a weighted average and it is below uh, one, which means I'm holding less than uh, less riskier than the market portfolio. Now, based on my portfolio beta, I can finally compute the expected return for my portfolio. So I start with the risk-free rate then I, I take the difference between the market rate of return and the risk free rate and finally I multiply with my portfolio beta and this gives me the expected rate return for my portfolio so there are many use uh, of this expected return in some of the future finance classes you'll learn more about this so for the for the time being enjoy the new things that you have just learned using excel thank you very much